In 1897, eight-year-old Virginia O'Hanlon wrote a letter to the editor of the New York Sun in which she asked the question, is there a Santa Claus? The famous reply, written by editor Francis Farcellus Church, was, yes, Virginia, there is a Santa Claus. In his reply, Church wrote, Santa exists as certainly as love and generosity and devotion exist, and you can know that they abound and give to your life its highest beauty and joy. You know, Francis Church wrote far better than he knew. Our common cultural notions about Santa Claus find their root in the life of a real human being, Nicholas of Myra, also known as Saint Nick. Late in the third century in the city of Myra, located in the Roman region of Asia Minor in what is now southern Turkey, Nicholas was brought up in a Christian home. His parents instructed him in Christian teaching, and he particularly enjoyed hearing stories about Jesus. When his mother told him how Jesus healed the sick, cared for the needy, and performed miracles, he found himself wishing Jesus were still on earth. During his teen years, his wealthy parents died, leaving a great fortune to Nicholas. In an effort to find direction for his life, he went on an extended pilgrimage to Egypt and the Holy Land. Upon his return to Myra, Nicholas attended every assembly of the church and spent hours in prayer. Whenever Christians met in Myra, Nicholas was there. On the 24th of February in the year 303, Diocletian, the Emperor of Rome, published the Edict Against the Christians. The Edict ordered the immediate destruction of Christian scriptures and places of worship across the entire empire and prohibited Christians from assembling for worship. As the story goes, the Bishop of Myra died during the persecution. Finding a replacement for the respected leader would be a difficult assignment. Frankly, anyone accepting the job was essentially signing his own death warrant. One night, the head of the church council was told in a dream to stand by the front door of the meeting place the next morning and ask the name of each person entering. The first person responding with Nicholas was to be appointed the new bishop. You can imagine Nicholas' surprise when confronted by the church official. Yet after much prayer and consideration, he accepted the appointment as Bishop of Myra. He was subsequently jailed and spent some time in a Roman prison. Early in his ministry, Bishop Nicholas discovered the importance of a faith that works. This faith motivated all of his actions. He personally felt responsible for meeting the needs of his community and dedicated all his wealth to this end. At times he disguised himself and secretly visited the homes of the most needy. Under the cloak of darkness, he delivered food, clothing, and money. The recipients had no idea where these blessings originated. As far as they were concerned, God himself had answered their prayers and met their needs. Nicholas taught others the manifold blessings of secret giving. As a result, many learned how God can use those who give unselfishly with no thought of any personal recognition. Upon his death, some citizens of Myra picked up where Nicholas left off. They secretly began meeting the deepest needs of hurting souls, seeking no credit at all for their benevolent actions. When the recipients asked who provided the gifts, their benefactors cheerfully replied, Saint Nicholas must have brought them. Italian sailors took the story of Nicholas back to their homeland. Before long, the practice of secret giving had spread throughout Europe. Whenever the story of Saint Nicholas was told, a flame of generosity was ignited within the hearts of listeners. Many took up the practice of giving in secret. The way of life of Nicholas filtered into Germany. From Germany, the story of Sankt Nicholas was carried into Holland. In the Dutch language, his name was pronounced Sinterklaas. The Holland Dutch brought the tradition of the ancient bishop to the New World as they settled in New Amsterdam, which is modern-day New York City. Thus, Saint Nick burst onto the American scene. In the English language, Sinterklaas morphed into Santa Claus. In earlier times in Holland, the celebration of St. Nicholas Day on December 6th 
was an occasion to help the poor by putting some money in their shoes. Perhaps it's time to revive this lost tradition. Many of our neighbors and co-workers are in need this Christmas. In the spirit of St. Nicholas, consider giving an anonymous donation to a worthy charity this year. Merry Christmas to you and to your family, and may the joys of the season remain with you throughout the new year.